Hello, welcome to my video where I'm going to recap my run in Hartford in the United States. I was there on holiday for 10 days last week um, and I did the Hartford Regional. I had a really, really good run. I think one of the best in play Pokemon. I got to fourth place only, only. Uh, it was the biggest one in North America so far, but I had 11 wins in this tournament, which I think, I'm not sure if that's the most wins. I, I, I doubt it actually. But it's definitely one of the most. Um, and especially considering I dropped in losers so early. Uh, I was pretty proud of my achievement here. So in this video, I'm going to talk just a real quick intro. Um, going through the teams real quick. And I only had two matchups on stream and an interview. Um, so if you want to see that, you probably have to skip, uh, skip ahead a little bit. Um, because the first, on day one, I had no battles. Um, so first off, I was there on holiday for 10 days. I already was qualified for Worlds, but I wanted to meet some of the American homies uh, again. Uh, I have some really good friends there that I, would, that I love to see at least like once a year as long as I play this game. Um, I can also still win the Travel War though. And I have to hit first place. And you know, in Pokemon Go, I've I've went 0-2 before in a regional tournament, so I've had a really good reality check then. And I know that I shouldn't, you know, have my hopes high up because any misplay can really uh, lead to your downfall real quick. Um, it's also my first tournament playing in a stadium elite jersey. Um, I we I'm I'm I am captain of the EU Empress faction, but we are rebranding uh, at some point to stadium elite uh because we both think that we can get more out of our brand as players since we are all quite good at EU Empress. Um, so let's take a look at the Hartford teams um we're just gonna go the the matchups that i had one by one uh many players had a buy in round one i did not i played against breezy one two three four five who i also met at the neic last year uh which was one of the biggest tournaments back then as well in north america my first time there too uh really cool guy and I was kind of afraid already because this is, I know this is a quite a good opponent, but this team seems kind of off, kind of old school, a little bit weak to uh, register you. I was going to say um, Scrafty so-so because it loses like the zero shields, but you know, which fighter does it nowadays to register you? Um, yeah, so Breezy actually was uh, about nine minutes late to, to the matchup. Um, after five minutes being late to the matchup, you get a game one loss already. Uh, after 10 minutes late, you get two uh, game losses, which means you just lost the matchup then. Uh, we did do two matches regardless, which was kind of funny. I won game one, and then he said, and then he asked, yeah, let's, you want to do one more? Just see who would have really won it. And I was like, well, yeah, if, if you if you win one, then you kind of need to play another one for, for the real deal. So I felt I already felt like assuming he didn't, he didn't feel like he had much, much of a shot anyway. My uh, Triton was really safe in his matchup. I also hard predicted uh, the Scrafty lead uh, from him. And he even had a Reg 2 in the back as well in game one where I led the Charizard. I predicted him. Uh, not expecting the Charizard because his Azuma and Altera looked quite strong against me. It was also a quick attack, Diggers B, which made my turn a little bit better. Um, on to round number two, DFL. Um, as you can see, this team was a pretty wicked one. I don't remember the sixth one, unfortunately. Um, I do remember that my Trident was super safe in this matchup and that sixth Pokemon was also weak to Lantern. My Spark Lantern looked really good in this matchup. Sorry if I didn't mention Moose's yet. It's just going real fast. I'm just going real fast through because I know it's going to be a long video. Anyway, um, this matchup actually went quite difficult because he had alignment every time. I wanted my Lantern on anything but the Credilly, but it was on the Credilly every time. However, in game one, I managed to flip switch. Um, so I had my Cred uh, my Lantern on his Toxapex, and I believe I had my my Alolan Ninetales on his uh Either my Alolan Ninetales or, or my Obstagoon on this. Oh, sorry, it was my Trident. I had my Trident on this Credilly. Yeah, because Trident Lantern was what I ran here every time. And, um, you know, in, in the very end, I believe we I won on CMP. So it was a 2-0 win, but it was not an easy one for sure. Even though this team was quite wicked. Like, Rock on the Tox Specs. I, I dig it. I respect it. But, yeah, something like an Obstagoon, Red Steel, Lantern were really tough core breaks for this team. Uh, I also run Power Snow, a lot of Nine Tails, um, so like Medicham isn't even that great for it as well. Daven Hundreds, uh, actually, so, so more of a memer. He, he finds himself quite washed, and he's running an incredibly RPS team, which is not great for me. In fact, 
I'm actually uh, quite a fan of Bastidon. But what I'm not a fan of here is Nidoqueen. All my Pokemon lose to Nidoqueen. And he also has a Sneasler. Uh, he talked to uh, really good players like Wadash, Onion Frank and Hot Pocket before my friend overheard them talking about the matchup. Um, and they were watching as well, which I actually found quite distracting. Uh, maybe that's Copium talking, to be honest, uh, because I didn't play too well anyway. Game 1 just went just terribly wrong. I let Charizard into Nidoqueen, went for Dragon Claw, hoped, hoping... Uh, I went for a simultaneous KO in the lead, but I eventually Nidoqueen survived 1 HP, and I lost the lead with a shield down, and at that point, the Sneasler just broke my... Travenant Registry Core. Now, Sneeze is not really a legit Pokemon to get, but uh, honestly, I'm, I'm a little bit careless about it. It's not really uh, something I mind too much. I think it's a pretty bad Pokemon, to be honest, because like a C Pump from Travenant is like 40%. So I honestly always consider Travenant to be safe here. Um, and then game three, I just didn't count very well, which led him to CMP on my lantern at the very end for a charge move. Uh, and I lost actually in this round already to. Daven hundreds. He uh, he cooked me. He cooked me. So then we go to losers round number three. Losing in in winners round three meant I had to play five more games and I had to wait three hours to finally start this matchup here. Uh, I actually went for a nap in between and I brought headsets in between because I felt like yeah I just was so distracted during Daven hundreds match uh, and I I prefer playing with sound so. Uh, and it actually went much better. Now, I don't remember if he actually had the Umbrian. I do remember he's the only outdated player using uh, Talonflame. Uh, <laughs> I respect Valor Ash a lot. I think he doesn't play as much anymore. That's why he might be using these kind of teams uh, or Pokemon. Um, <clears throat> I don't think I don't think it's a very good one. No, it, might, it may also have been Sableye, by the way, instead of Umbrian. Regardless, um, I boosted in game one with my Obstagoon against him. Um... He did not have a meta gem now that I think of it. He did not have a meta gem because he had no obstacle answer. Um, but yeah, and game two, I also boost against him. And that's how I basically beat Valor Ash. <laughs> I was very lucky uh, against him. I was very lucky against him. Yeah, he had Sableye. Um, Ani and Frank, one of the best players. And this actually, he is well known for running very RPS teams in GBL. Um, but this is the first time he runs Bastiodon in a play Pokemon tournament. And it's actually a really annoying team because it's also Shadow Charm Alola Ninetales. Um, he used to run Altaria before, but now he switched to Noctile. So my, I already felt like, yo, my my Trevor is basically always kind of safe here. Uh, obviously, I don't get to charge against Charm Alola Ninetales, but everything else is just fine. Uh, now he has Noctile, so I can't say switch it anymore. He does run Water Gun Lantern, so my Spark Lantern is much better here. Um... I don't remember exactly how game one and two went. I won game one, lost game two. Game three, he, he decided to go for Trevenant, uh, Medicham, Bastion, and that's basically win lead uh, and RPS in the back. Unfortunately for him, I let Charizard and I had Trevenant, uh, Obstacle in the back, and up oh, that was over. Oh, so no, no, I had Trevenant, uh, not Trevenant, Obstacle, I had Trevenant Lantern in the back, yeah. So. Basically, Ani Frank got kind of RPS here. Uh, we, we like we talked a lot during battle, though. You also also see uh, in the battles that I did on stream that I just keep talking with my opponents because I'm like playing. I know these people. I play with like friends, and you know, Ani Frank. I always thought he, he he didn't really like me anymore because every time we played and he was running a serious team, he lost in GBL, and I was like, yeah, you, you can only play RPS. Uh, but you know, we had a good conversation. Uh, he's just a really cool guy. And, you know, funnily, he said, yeah, whoever wins this probably uh, likely sweeps day one. It did happen. It did happen. Um, that wasn't a given thing, though, because my next opponents were not easy. Mama Climbs, actually the girlfriend of Valor Ash, ran a Kanto Ninetales, which, which beats my Trevenant Registeel Alola Ninetales. That's three Pokemon on my line. Um, now, Mama Climbs also does have a great matchup because she has four Pokemon that lose to my Shadow Charizard. So we were both always looking at which team is the best ABA we can run here. Uh, that was kind of kind of the, the most iffy thing here. Now, I did find myself to have a slight advantage to uh, predict that she would always run Umbreon. Uh People who have Umbreon always run Umbreon because it's, they, they consider it to be like the safest Pokemon. That's, that's how I read it usually. Um, but yeah, it's kind of annoying because Registeel, uh, Trident is my RPS core, just like other people use 
I think Swampert Alolan Ninetales is like the, the opposite. Well, I like Dragon Red still more. Um, so yeah, basically she only has that Tapu Fini for my Charizard. And then Armbuen can hangs in well, of course, because of its bulk. Um, game one, she played ABA to Charizard. I don't remember what I ran, but I do know that I ran both Charizard and Obstagoon. She didn't bring the Tapu Fini. And um, what it, it, I had a very clutch win there. I had a C and Pete swap. I swapped, I kept the Dranclaw in my Charizard for the end game. Uh, swapped it into the Umbreon and we see him Pete as, as my chair was at 1 HP and that way I was able to get to uh, two more charge moves that was needed. It was very close and I told her that she needs to teach Valorash uh, uh, <laughs> that she's better than Valorash at this point. I think Valorash honestly still is one of the best in the world but uh, he needs to get into it again. I don't think he plays a lot right now. <clears throat> so yeah, I won here 2-0 as well but it was not easy. Next opponent, Anof. Uh, Anof uh, really became much closer with her during this trip as well. We hung out in Boston after after Hartford as well. I was in New York before Hartford and uh, Boston for two days after. Um, and she's running double steel. She really likes Tapu Fini. And as you can see, built around that. Anof really runs like a typical team here. If you've seen Arsh's Aurelius video, uh, you see this team. And you just recognize what he says. Trevenant beats the strongest Pokemon in his meta. Pokemon, well, I wouldn't say Tapu Fini is the strongest Pokemon. I know it would, probably. But, like, it beats Water Pokemons, beats Registeel, beats Geophys, beats Medicham. Those aren't so strong in open Great League. And then she has two Pokemon to hard answer it. Uh, I honestly don't see Licky versus Trevi as, Trevenant as super bad for Trevenant. Because, you know, Lick, Licky Tongue doesn't have really charge moves to throw against it. Uh, but that's like a classic team there. Um, I, I don't remember how... Oh yeah, game one was actually quite funny. She brought like, I believe, Noctal, Registeel, Medicham. And I was like, why the hell are you bringing Registeel? It's so much worse than Jiggler and Stuffisk against my team. And she told me, yeah, I kind of regret it the moment I locked it in. Uh, and game two, I think I double shielded my Lantern, my Spark Lantern lead against their Galarian Stuffisk because I... Was pretty sure they were playing something like soft ABA to my uh, Trevenant, which they did. They had that, uh, it's called the Tapu Fini in the back. And thus, I won 2-0 here as well. Uh, then in the losers finals, uh, David Hundreds lost to Ilum in the winners finals of my group, Group C. And I play him again. And this time I outplayed him. I, I read him. I read him perfectly. Game one, I played ABA with my Trevenant, my my RPS Trevenant Registeel core against his Sneasling because I was like, you know, he always plays it in the back. I'm just gonna lead Registeel. It'll be fine. Um, one more important thing about his team is that he runs Power Snow on Nine Tails. Uh, so in this matchup, the first game I remember well. Um, and that is where I found that David Hunters might not have all the knowledge of the team of his Pokemon per se. I played the Zero Shields with the Registeel against the New Queen, which is really close in the Zero Shields. In fact, Registeel wins that because you outpace two, two Focus Blasts uh, over two Earth Powers. But he CMPs me uh, on my second Focus Blast with a Poison Fang, which does not KO in the Zero Shields. Thus, I win the Zero Shields here, get a, get a Shield Advantage. He is dry on energy. I get energy on my uh, lantern. And he had no... He never brought Victory Bell. Victory Bell is actually one of the Pokemon I was afraid of. But I'll talk about that later in another matchup. Um, but yeah, I, I, I decided to bring the lantern more often. Simply because it checks that Sneasler quite well. And especially if he doesn't bring that Victory Bell. It performs quite well there. I don't remember what he had as third. Um, but that's basically how that went. And then game two... Um, I think I double checked his Power Snow Little Nitos that he brought for some reason. I think to check the Trevenant or Charizard, uh, which I don't think I brought at all. Um, and yeah, then I just had this red, my red shoe and lantern for that Alola Ninetales. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't remember exactly what he could have done against those team comps um, with the leads. But, you know, that that's some big talk for me now. You'll see later how that exact same scenario goes wrong for me. Uh, it was a pleasure to meet David Hundreds as well. Uh, it's also someone from 
the community. Now, we're going to take a look at uh, an interview that I did on day two. This was actually all my day one matchups. I was, uh, I believe, 7-1 on day one, which is pretty <laughs> wicked. Uh, and uh, I was invited for an interview on the beginning of day two. So we're going to take a look at that right now. Within these play Pokemon tournaments. All right, well, we saw some great top plays there, Mark, but we've seen some other great top plays from some other trainers as well. In fact, one that we've seen featured very regularly, we're gonna be bringing on for a special interview segment as well. We actually have him here joined with us. We have Inadequance, also known as Martine, here on the broadcast. Inadequance, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, I had a pretty good run uh, yesterday, and now I made it to, do to uh, day two here. With Shadow Charizard, nonetheless. It's true. All right. Well, for those of you that may not know Inadequance, maybe give us a quick background or introduction for yourself. Uh, yeah, so my name is Martijn, in game name Inadequance, 27-year-old um, battler from the Netherlands. I came overseas uh, hoping for some uh, success here in uh, in North America. I already qualified for Worlds, but there's still that travel award lurking for me, so uh, I'm going to give it my best today. And not to mention the honor and the glory of the champion title, the in-game uh, in shirt as well. I know a lot of folks are looking for that one. All right, a couple questions for you. I didn't mention this Shadow Charizard already. We've seen you successfully pilot that. We've had some trainers that have had some struggles lining up that Charizard to be as impactful as possible. How do you successfully pilot and get the most value out of that Pokemon? Well, it's kind of difficult, uh, Wholesome, because if you get your Charizard in a bad matchup, such as Lantern, it's basically unusable. Um, another thing about Charizard, it is loose a lot of matchups with shields down, so when using that, it really comes down to strategies where you try not to use too many shields, um, and then hope that you can set some of the Pokemon on fire with Blast Burn, because it hits hearts on anything, even when resisted. With the, your opponent's shields down, that's when Charizard goes to town. Those Blast Burns, like you said, even resisted, in many cases, can two-shot Pokemon, even like Azumarill. All right, Mark, question for you. Go ahead. Yeah, absolutely. Inadequance, is it coming over here into the NA meta, um, obviously the EU meta has, has changed quite a bit or is very different. I mean, anything that you noticed that really stood out to you in, in day one? Um, that's actually a very difficult question because from what I've seen, I've seen, I've watched basically every single North American regional. They they just fit my time schedule quite easily <laughs> for watching. But um, this, it was not what I prepared for. Hart, the Hartford regional here has so many crazy picks, right? I've seen a lot of Toxic packs. I faced two Needle Queens, three Bastion yesterday. It was quite a quite a gauntlet. Um, so I think today actually not only has been exceptional as in being the biggest regional, is also being the spiciest one. Uh, so I have no idea uh, what to prepare for what I'm going to face. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Well, one more question for me. Where do you see Metacham in today's meta? I know a lot of folks have been dropping it in favor of some other anti-steals, things like Swampert. Do you think that it's a top meta pick still, or is it something that we're starting to see fall off? I think it's absolutely still uh, one of, if not the best Pokemon, just because of its flexibility, right? With Ice Punch and Psychic, preferably. Sometimes some people use Power Punch and Dynamic or Dynamic Punch, right? So I think it's one of the most flexible still. It can hit basically anything back, right? Even Trevenant as one of its worst matchup. Uh, I decided not to bring it simply because I like to run a little bit off meta, but otherwise I would still say that Metachem is by far the best counter in the current meta. Okay, thank you, Inadequance. Mark, one last question from you. Yeah, I think overall, seeing a, such a spicy meta in in this regional, I mean, where do you think where do you think the meta is headed after this? Any overall thoughts that you have? Yeah, it's difficult. I think uh, what I see, what I observe in Europe mostly is that players tend to bring at least one off meta pick to try and find that core breaker against many of the common. Uh, cores that we see, right? Like Swampert, Alola Ninetales, people try to core back that. I've seen some Gust Lords break Lantern and Trevenant cores, and I think people are kind of shifting towards that. I think people have watched the uh, European International Championship, right, um, last month, so they try to, add to they try to learn from that and adapt that here too. So I think that's why we also have a lot of uh, of meta picks here. Yep, Great. and breaking those cores is absolutely essential in many cases, responding to the meta. All right, well, Inadequates, that's all we have time for, unfortunately. Any shout-outs or anyone you want to thank before we let you go? Uh, there's there's two specific people I want to give a shout-out to. A mind joke, uh, today uh, participated in the Malmo Regional, barely didn't reach it, but I really hope he does in the next Regional. And the other one is Nono Zaza, uh, also uh, a European battler, not participating in this tournament, but just came for the community visiting here. Uh, yeah, all the way guy. from Germany, yeah. making it over to Hartford, Connecticut, just to come hang out with all his friends. You love to see it. Nadequins, thank you for your time today. Best of luck in the tournament. Thank you for having me, and I'll try. All right. So that was the interview uh, that I had at the start of day two, and then we are going back into battles. 
Um, so, my first matchup of the day was El Calvissimo, a local of one of my friends, Mish. Um, she played as well in Hartford with like oh, Machamp, Beedrill, Pelipper, crazy actually, and made it to day two. Unfortunately, she got knocked, knocked out in game in round one. Um, and this is what I kind of prepared for the most. I've faced a lot of off meta teams so far, and this is kind of hard meta. Instead of a lot of Nitos, there's a Bomb Snow. I don't think a Bomb Snow is good against my team anyway, because I have the Registeel, the Obstagoon. The Power Snow, Lolo Ninetales, and the Charizard. So, not a Pokemon I predict as much. But then again, he also has the Sableye and the Noctile for my Trevenant. Um, now, one of the scariest thing about this, people I don't know, I don't, I'm very afraid to lead Trevenant again. Uh, against. Because they might just run, there's a lot of people who are like, okay, if I have Noctile, surely they won't lead Trevenant. So I can just lead like Medicham with Lantern in the back. And just go full... As if Trevenant doesn't exist uh, mode. And that's what he did. He That's indeed what he did. Which is it's something frustrating to me. Because I, I I myself do not like taking such risks. Playing hard ABA, right? If I lead Trevenant against Medicham Lantern. Uh, it would be very difficult for my opponent to come back from. Um, I think... I, I don't remember exactly how this matchup went. I did win this 2-1. And he did do that in one of those matchups. Um, regardless. My next matchup was against Greg T, uh, who I did play before. I don't think I ever really hard lost against him. And it's actually the exact same team. He's also running Water Gun Lantern, just like El Calvissimo. So I have a little bit of an advantage with my Spark Lantern. Spark Lantern was just perfect for breaking Water Gun and Noctile. Water Gun Lantern and Noctile Core. That's why I always add that Spark Lantern. It's probably, it may have been one of the Pokemon I've used the most uh, as well. Um, also, Greg didn't use any Abomas Snow. Also, he played ABA against my Trevenant, which was super frustrating. I didn't catch either um, El Calvissimo or Greg on it with a Trevenant lead. But uh, Greg played a lot with Noctile. And I played a lot with a lot of Ninetales and Lantern in this matchup. So you can kind of predict how that went for Noctile. It did not go well. <laughs> it did not go well. You, If I'm playing triple strong as Noctile, that kind of should, should give a signal of how I feel about Noctile. I do not like that Pokemon. Uh, he almost actually won game two. Uh, I'm not sure if he played. He, he, he say switches the Noctile, tried to preserve it, then catch a, a Thunderbolt somewhere. Uh, but I was too quick with my swap to let that happen. And I won 2-0 here as well. Uh, which felt kind of bad. I felt kind of bad for Greg. Because I know the feeling of starting uh, in the winners. No wait, he started in the lose actually. Did he? No, he started in the winners. Yeah, and then he lost two in a row. Which was kind of tough for him. I've been there. Next matchup, which is kind of a decisive one. Uh, Meteor Fallion has been to... 10 regionals with uh, this kind of teams. And it's very RPS. He, I think he used to run Altaria before. Now he's running a Bastion Victory Bell uh, core with uh, paired with a Noctile Swampert core. is very uh, frustrating to play against. We actually disputed game one here. I played Trenant Regis to Obstagoon. And he played Sableye, Medicham, uh, Bastion. I baited out his Medicham with my... With my Registeel and uh, then Obstagoon swept. However, we had some lag at the start and he disputed that. But because he didn't do anything like he said he would have if he didn't lag. Um, and especially because he swapped his Bastion onto my Obstagoon. Um, he did not get a rematch granted for that. And then game three, game two, I just RPS'd him like real bad. Every time every time my Lantern lands on a Noctile, it's just a hard win. Um, this was actually a really crucial one for him. Um, because as you can see here. You don't really see it in here, to be honest. But um, about if you look at the winners up up here, let me let me get my mouse visible on this. Is it visible yet? Here we go. So if we look at the winners round two here, Ilum, Magic Mason uh, are already qualified for worlds, and then we have Hot Pocket, Doombug, uh, and myself already qualified. Which means that if uh, I if if I win this matchup. It would mean that Troctor is then tied fifth um, with the winner of Hot Pocket and Doombug. And all the other qualifiers, uh, excluding Wadash, who qualified later, um, are around the same place. Which means that Troctor qualifies at fifth, tied fifth place 
because Meteor Valiant lost to me here. If Meteor Valiant wins this, um, he has a shot at winning at, at qualifying here, actually, because then he's tied with Trogdor and they have to play it out. Uh, or if Meteor Valiant wins, he he will be in. So um, a very crucial one. Um, I am really not sorry for gatekeeping him with this team. I'm, I'm just gonna say that I, this is actually like the 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 fourth Bastion team. Well, actually, I faced David twice, I guess. But I, I already came to that to the table like again. I was not happy. Um, so now we're going to take a look at some battles on this that I had on the stream. They are sped up by about uh, fifty percent. Um, if you want to see the original one, I will have the link in the description uh, to the vault on YouTube. So I'm playing against one of my friends, Magic Mason, here on the stream. He's running a Gauzlord team, which is pretty cool. A Pokemon I considered as well because it breaks Trenant and the Ghost types really nicely. So uh, Magic Mason, a really good player, has been very consistent in uh, play Pokemon tournaments. He's been in top eight. He's reached top eight in many of them. He actually, uh, his words also says he's, he started streaming because of me. I'm very flattered because of that. I used to do a lot of duo streams and uh, he was one of my guests on there. And this is a horrible lead for me now. So one strategy that I really liked here, and this is maybe, I'm not sure if this is something you should copy from me because uh, we're going to get a moveset update, but I like the Obstagoon Charizard core a lot. If I, if I play against someone who does not run weird Medicham lead uh, Lantern in the back teams, against a team with also uh, Trana, look at him calling my bait by the way, which is horrible for me, then I can always lead the Obstagoon and say switch to Charizard. Because there's no shot that someone like Mason, who doesn't take these these risks, leads Medicham and then have Lantern in the back to counter my chair. So that's why uh, this combination works so good. Unfortunately, um, I know he only has one answer uh, besides that Lantern for my chair. Right? But since he calls my bait, it's just horrible. Um, which I kind of said on, on, on there as well. I'll try to get a little bit of a transcript because I talked so much with Mason. It's, I mean, that's what I do it, friends. Um, and here we're just laughing. You already saw him kind of looking at me be when he brought in the Guzzlord to, to see my reaction. He just hard countered me here. Honestly, though, if I landed the Blasburn on the Galarian Stunfist, I just hard counter him. I really need a switch advantage. And uh, yeah, that was just really a 50 50 call. Um, I know I'm famous for saying, like, or, or known for saying, uh, always bait. Um, and exactly for that reason, I bait because people might, you know, not predict. Uh, that then the, you know have a mind game in that it's it's, it's always a mind game it always is um, <clears throat> see there's also a lack of plushies on my table um, i do have a chandler and pelipper plushie usually with me i actually had the chandler plushie uh with me as well um but since my hotel was so close i uh, i actually forgot it it was in my back but i just forgot it so yeah that's 104 magic mason but yeah i do have the chandler um uh, i just forgot it unfortunately we are going to game number two here. So I'm 1-0 behind at this point. And, you know, I do have faith in my strategy here. The, the Obstagoon lead, Charizard in the back. It's one of my favorites against uh, sense, teams, that makes, teams and people that make sense. Now, that has been quite difficult in, these, in this tournament because many of those teams have Bastion on. It's kind of annoying. Going immediately for the nice ones here, hoping for a boost, just throwing it immediately. Um, and I actually get that boost. I say, oh, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> and he's actually going for Thunderbolt here. I'm saying, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and shield this. He says, I don't even know why I'm going for the nuke here. Um, <laughs> which was quite funny. Going to throw it uh, r way before the, the, the surf here. Because I realize I need to get rid of this for my Charizard. Now, one thing I'm very afraid of here is a, uh, is a Galarian Stomachs in the back. So you don't even see a single smile on my face yet here because I'm really not sure if I can win this. If it is Galarian Stomachs in the back, which I do think is very good against my team, I lose this battle. Um, Skytech coming through, I will live that. And then I get to another Night Slash. But really hoping for a shield here. You see me look, you see the look on my face and then say, oh, it's only a Sableye. <laughs> and it's actually really good for me uh, because Shadow, a lot of Night Tills, the Weather Balls just add up so much. The Weather Balls and the Power Snows add up so so uh, much that I'm finer with a shield down. Um, and even if I if he would bait me here and see him pee me on the next move, I still have my Charizard when he is dry on energy. So it's very, very fine. 
Uh, I tell him, yes, sometimes you bait, sometimes you don't, I guess, huh? <laughs> so yeah, where the ball coming through, we've seen peon this, and I know I live this, only a foul play. Because my accounting was actually quite accurate during uh, most of the battles on stream. Yeah, where the ball coming through, he's asking me, what do you have in the back? Show me, and I say, yeah, it's Obstagoon. <laughs> there it is. The Shadow Claws are triple resisted on the Obstagoon, so it... Doesn't it, it wouldn't kill me there, and I was just you know, <laughs> just trolling. Even though I, I I'm I'm not like very you know I'm pretty open on what I do. I also don't want to reveal that third Pokemon there, just you you know because it is in my advantage for him. Uh, but yeah, as you saw again, the Obstagoon Charizard core. I was just very confident in that. Um, and you know what? Honestly, I might just do it again. I honestly might just do it again. So yeah, here we go. Game number three. It's 1-1 one, one right now between me and Magic Mason. And I just lead the Obstagoon in again. And he, he gets like a little bit upset. He's saying, he's saying, again? And I said, yeah, of course. You don't expect it. And then he says, switch to the Mana Champ. Uh, actually, at this point, I wasn't even thinking ar already about what's in the bag. I'm actually getting a little bit bothered by some uh, starter there. So I throw one before his Ice Punch, just not taking any risk. I could have done one more, I guess. But I didn't want to take any risk there, um, considering Trent is not going to do much against Guzzlord anyway, other than getting to one Shadow Ball. Um, and if I get to a Seabone, it doesn't make much difference, I think. Since I have uh, not the Charizard, but the Alola Knights on the back. So when I predict the Medicham Lantern backline, I do like bringing my Charizard into the Medicham just because um, then I can fully RPS with a Trent. In, in the back but this time i didn't bring the charizard uh, i bring my alone knights here i was looking at my team sheet uh i was predicting i was telling uh saying to him yeah I've, you don't have g fist do you Nah, i know what you got it's that lantern which makes perfect sense he has a lot of faith in his water gun lantern um but i have a, a lot of faith in obstacle which is just really quick here and at this point i think i can just go for uh double shield alone knight so if you go stunnable here it gets a little bit rough because it gets to farm down before it gets on the move I think, but uh, he goes for that surf, which is why you see the fist bump from me. And this is probably the worst play he could have made at this point because he CMPs with me here. Uh, my Obstagoon in this case is a little bit attack weighted, so um, I mean, I don't think you need to be attack weighted though to win CMP here. And yeah, at this point, the power stones are going to add up enough that where the ball is going to KO. I'm just going to shoot, go ahead and shoot that. Uh, there you saw me make a little bit of an Obstagoon face. Um, I was for a sec. I, I, I was saying you don't have sludge bomb, right? That'd be pretty wicked. <laughs> but no, um, I I vaguely remembered honestly. I I don't think I watched him play Guzzlord on stream. I I was battling most uh, my like myself at the tables uh, most of the time, so didn't see much of the stream at all. Water ball coming through and I uh, power stone down, and that's actually a two one victory uh, for myself against Magic Mason, giving him a hug. Uh, you know, it's it's really cool to. Finally play these people in in uh, regionals because what are the odds uh, or how many times is gonna happen right like either in NA or at, like worlds maybe but yeah worlds gonna be even more difficult now we're going to take a look at my final matchup of the day um, I didn't win the tournament Wadaj did uh, rightfully so he is one of the best I was hoping to play him as well to be honest. Uh, instead, I'll be playing Hot Pocket. And Hot Pocket is unfortunately somewhat memeing with a Bastidon, which puts a lot of bench pressure on uh, on my team as well. But I know what the, I know Hot Pocket already. I'm pretty sure he's going to double shield that a little Night Tail. So I'm going to start out with a Charizard Registeel core here, uh, which is pretty much unbreakable. Uh, however, Water Gun Lantern does beat Registeel. Luckily, he didn't bring it. I lead him to the match. Um, I'm asking him if he's running something stupid like a Trident in the back, but he isn't. And then I just bait him. I say, oh no, I don't have an answer for this. And then I bring the Spark Lantern. Haha. <clears throat> so yeah, Spark Lantern is great in this matchup. Um, and here I'm actually surprised. Because we shouldn't see him be here. This this shouldn't be a shadow one. It's actually a smart play by him. Because he wants to get the farm down the manage him. And I see right through it. So I'm going to go for the other charge. You see my difficult phase there. And I say like, no, 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 no. Hold on. I'll rather, I'd rather take a shadow ball than you uh, than you, you getting so much farm. So I'm going to farm him completely down the perfect under charge that I need to get the two Thunderbolts here. Two Thunderbolts won't KO from, uh, from here. In the zero shoes, you do KO with two Thunderbolts and the Sparks. Uh, and you see me waiting half, uh, like a, like half a second as well, giving him the stare down, making sure he knows he has a, he's in a bad spot. I could throw my Dragon Claw immediately, 
but I was afraid he would catch, so I'd rather just shield. Like at this point, since the matchup is so alignment dependent, uh, doesn't really matter. I have the perfect answers here. As you can see, he double shields his charm a little nine tails, uh, and I have all my Pokemon in the right spot. Uh, basically, the perfect team there. Uh, <clears throat> honestly, I was either considering uh, the 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 lantern or the obstacle there. I'm really glad I brought the. Uh, Brought the land in this case. And the Hot Pocket actually got so few registered debuffs here. Actually crazy. Another Zap Cannon coming through. Um, yeah, he uses his second shield. Doesn't really matter at this point. He's probably trying to get something fancy out of it. But I have a full chair. Almost a full chair art with a load of Blast Burn. He's going to let it go. And now you're going to see something uh, uh, funny. Because I actually accidentally throw Drank here. But he catches it. <laughs> And I'm like, you fool! That was not necessary. Because I actually almost gave him a wink on there. Imagine he, he oh, then catches my serious move, uh, my Blast Burn. Although I think two Drank Claws with Wing Attacks may have done this as well. Blast Burn coming through and it will take him out. But we had a good laugh there. Because, you know, he thought he, he, he gave me that smug look like... Uh, that he that he caught the Blast Burn, but he only caught the Drank Claw that I threw by accident. So, always a good time with Pocket. Let's take a look at battles number two here. Um... So yeah, not sure what to predict here. I'm, I'm definitely expecting something different. But one thing I really fear is the power of Medicham. It can also kind of beat anything on my line, which is annoying. Um, this was actually a really frustrating game because it was quite laggy on my side. Uh, and you're going to see the first thing here. Going for the bait, giving me a little bit of a stare down. Uh, I mean, he's looking down the table anyway. And here, I, uh, yeah, I first shield this, of course. And then I tried to bank a Shadow Ball and swap. But uh, that didn't exactly work. As you can see, um, maybe it was my own fault. I don't know. And here you see me s charging so much slower than you. I'm like I'm like four lock-ons off a zap cannon still, which is just crazy. It pays me really hard. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I, maybe I just clicked at the very end of the uh, the very very end of the shadow claw or something. It just felt very laggy. You can see me being very frustrated. He doesn't get debuffed yet again. Uh, I mean, regardless, let's throw C bomb anyway. But I also think he just lost track completely because he might not think I've lagged or something. And here, more delay. I'm not. Just, uh, when I was on stream, I thought I got denied there. Uh, that I get, didn't get my fast move through. And here, I thought again. I'm not sure actually if he was behind. Gonna shield this up. I mean, I think I, I know at this point it's probably over unless he has Basti. But even if he has Basti, he still has a shield advantage too. No, there's no way. He actually went uh, ABA to the Charizard. Although I have to say, uh, in the two shields, the, sh the Shadow Zard does not beat Shadow a lot of Night Tails. Look at this cheeky play from me, by the way. Predicting him to swap, then throwing Shadow Ball. But, you know, it doesn't make a single difference regardless. Even even if that Shadow Ball landed. He I could not take out that Lantern. Yeah. That's unfortunately... Uh, a very tough game because I think if I stored a shadow ball, maybe I should have just thrown the shadow ball, then I could have maybe swept with obstacle with a shield. It's all in hindsight, though. Let's take a look at battle number three 1 1 between myself and Pocket. And I know he's gonna bring Bastion 100%, but where? I'm predicting Bastion lead or Alolan Naito's lead. So, what do you what core breaks that? It's the Red Steel, but he leads Tremnant. And this is the worst I could have faced because I'm playing ABA against the Tremnant here. Um, yeah, I'm having the lantern in the back, which is very unfortunate, um, and I, I kind of already know exactly what he's going to do. I didn't predict the Bastion exactly yet at this point, because I was like, wait, that's kind of weak to Obstagoon uh, if you would have that, but let's see. He's going for another Shadow Ball here. I do predict a lot of Nitals in the back, because he likes to double shield that. He's been doing that twice now. I wouldn't be surprised if he does it three times. And here, uh, he's going to bring it in. But I'm not sure if I will get to another Weather Ball. And that's why I swap out into the Spark Lantern here. Spark Lantern has a decent matchup here. But I do lose the two shields. I I am going to try and get three Surfs. Uh, if I can get shields down, maybe Charizard can go to town. But um, as we see here, there is Bastion. on. And a lot of people say, why did you swap out? Uh, you could have won it otherwise. No, I don't win that because the Weather Ball is like 60% uh, from Shadow A9 on Shadow Zart and I have to shield. Bastion on is two shields up. I just lose. Uh, best case scenario, I get to move on Registeel. But... And I already say, I already know what you have in the back. I actually thought it was Water Gun Lantern. Um, what I'm going to try to do here is like, uh, you know, stall the clock. I already made a mistake by not waiting out those four extra seconds. 
Tried to get to a move here, but he already had, he's one charm off a weather ball as well. And that's going to end my run here because there's two plays I can make here. Throw the focus blossom farm down or try to wing attack down and somehow get to move on the Charizard. That is actually the play I'm going to try, but it's not going to happen. His Bastion's very excel as well. Maybe, honestly, the focus blossom one was the play, but you see how low my Charizard is there. And that's just over. Um... I don't regret my decision at all there with the leads. Uh, I think game two was just super unfortunate for me with, uh, you know, it was unfortunate with the lag maybe. I just think I, I, I should not have swapped at all. It's such an alignment dependent game, right? When there's Basses on and Charm alone, Ninetales, it's better sometimes to just let yourself get farmed down and, uh, you know, keep switch. Maybe maybe he makes some mistakes and swap out. He did that in a previous matchup as well. Um it happens, it happens. Old Pocket got there quite luckily as well. Because he won a previous matchup by like 1 HP. And the matchup before that, um, Doonbuck accidentally swapped his Noctaw into Hot Pocket's Bastidon. After uh, getting kicked out of a rematch where the app force closed. So, uh, But that is just all in hindsight. I'm not too bugged about it. I'm really glad I got 11 wins. Uh, I got a pretty nice medal. That that's that's the cool the one the coolest have right. The the fourth place medal. Well, it's mirrored, so you don't see the fourth place, but that's what it is. And um, I got a play mat that I already got at a previous regional. I think at the EUIC. Uh, that's a competitor one I had, but the top eight was a different one, which is the Miraidon. Um, really cool one. So I'm actually going to hang that up as well. Uh, if someone something on the wall, you may see. Um. Yeah, that was basically it. Uh, that was uh, the Hard Fort recap. I'll be doing more on Twitch as well, but that's going to be more community side. Uh, hope you liked the video. And if you have questions, let me know in the, in the comments. I'll likely answer. One, see you later. Bye.